Sorry, I lied. This came out a bit earlier than 12 weeks. My bad. Well, let's go over the rules briefly and then we can get into the video. This will also be the final video for this challenge. Since this is the third part, we'll go over the rules pretty briefly. First rule is that we will only use the Pokemon Ash Gray hack in this challenge. Second rule, we will need to fill up the Pokedex as much as possible before getting any gym badges. Third rule is that we can't use any glitches in this challenge. Great. Those are the rules for the challenge, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Traveling south towards Palatown, we run into an invisible wall. We meet a circus tamer looking to catch this Mr. Mime because her other one does not want to perform because she trains it too hard. Peter would be furious. Well, she wants us to battle her Mr. Mime to inspire it to perform now. I'm afraid I'm now participating in this circus tamer's torture. Mr. Mime is now inspired to perform again. Meeting Professor Oak, he tells us that we next need to take the Indigo Plateau test. He also wants to discuss our Pokédex progression. Aw oh, man, I can't wait for this one. Hell yeah! I've seen more than double the amount of Pokémon that Butthurt has seen. That is complete bullshit, Oak. How the hell does he have more Pokémon than me? Do you know what I've been doing for the past 80 plus hours? I've caught more Pokemon than he has seen. We hear an explosion come from Oak's backyard and soon realize that Team Rocket has rebounded back pretty quickly. They want to steal all the Pokemon in the backyard, so we decide to battle them. After defeating them, we talk to Oak in his office, where he tells us that we have caught 110 Pokemon so far. I know, pretty impressive. While we are in Palatown, we go see our mom and take a nap. Before we leave, we say bye to our stand-in father figure, Mr. Mime. Now we travel south of Palatown with our own raft complete a few side missions. We give a shelter to a slow poke to evolve it. We talk to the man with the Pikachu and battle him too. Next, we arrive on an island where we are stopped by a Dragonite carrying a video hologram. They invited us to meet the world's greatest trainer on New Island. Yes, that is the name of the island. To get there, we need to take the ferry on Old Shore Wolf. Unfortunately, the ferry is not running because of the storm. So, like the show, we need to take a raft to the island. Once we get on, we end up underwater on the back of a Blastoise, but we can get a few more Pokemon encounters down here. Here we catch Staryu, Dugon, Golduck. After catching we need in that area, we exit and arrive at New Island. Immediately, we're greeted by Nurse Joy. Upon entry, we show her our Neo ticket. After entering the building, the doors shut close, reigniting the plot of every horror movie. This building is filled with trainers with three level 45 final evolution Pokemon. Experience Goldmine. The world's greatest Pokemon trainer is a Mewtwo. To combat Pokemon slavery, Mewtwo takes all of our Pokemon and slaves them himself. To combat Mewtwo, I fall down a hole. Then Mew shows up and battles Mewtwo as a giant fuck you. Eventually, Mewtwo learns that enslaving Pokemon and people is wrong. We arrive back at Old Shore Wolf. Wait, what was that Mewtwo? You want everyone to subscribe and hit the like button? Wait, what was that? Or you're going to enslave them too? That seems a bit rash, Mewtwo. Guys, only about 0.7% of you are subscribed, and uh, Mewtwo seems pretty serious about the whole threat thing, so I would recommend it too. After a little more battling, Staryu evolves into Starmie. We move west of Viridian and cut down the tree, revealing a mountain path to the north, as well as a circus. Continuing down the path, we meet Bruno of the Elite Four, who is in search of a giant onyx. We go through the cave in the mountain, eventually we arrive at an archaeological site. In the building to the top right, you can mine rocks and sometimes you'll get a random item. But the purpose of this is to find an ancient artifact. We will keep mining though. In the top left building, we find a Jigglypuff who is able to quell the ancient Pokemon's unrest. This is why we kept mining, for that sweet, sweet moonstone to evolve the remaining Pokemon that we do need to evolve. After saving the day, the archaeologist on duty gives us a dome fossil. Ooh. After mining three moonstones, we can now evolve all the necessary Pokemon. Nidorina to Nidoqueen, Clefairy to Clefable, Jigglypuff to Wigglytuff. Now that we have completed these missions, we can continue towards the Pokemon League. Continuing west, we encounter Team Rocket and battle them this time to get the stolen Pokemon trainer badges they took. They have the same four Pokemon. At the entrance to Victory Road, we run into Butthurt, who gives us his best trash talk before running into the cave. After many battles and miscellaneous puzzles, we are ready to leave Victory Road and journey onwards to the Pokemon League. As soon as we enter Route 17 on the way to the Pokemon League, we are asked to become the torch bearer for the introduction ceremony. When we are about to light the main torch, we are greeted by Team Rocket. 
This time, they just want the torch, setting their ambitions a bit lower now. Maybe Team Rocket should target someone else. Maybe a daycare, or a single drunkard. Unlike the Pokemon games you may be familiar with, this game follows a show. In this league, it will be a tournament style system, where the first four battles are in different environments with different opponents. Our first battle is with Mandy on the water field. Like the rest of these battles, she will have three Pokemon, an Executor, Seedra, and a Golbat. I am quite a few levels ahead of all their Pokemon, so all of their Pokemon go down with one hit each, either from a Wing Attack or a Thunderbolt. The next battle is against Kevin on the Rock Field. His three Pokemon are Electrode, Cubone, and Nidorino. The levels are starting to rise quickly and become a real challenge. This battle would be more of a challenge if all of his Pokemon were fully evolved. All of his Pokemon go down in one or two hits of Earthquake, making this another easy battle for Dragonite. The third battle is with Pete from Pewter City. This battle will take place on the ice field. His three Pokemon are Graveler, Cloyster, and Arcanine. Levels increase again this time around, but luckily we have a super effective move for all of them. Graveler goes down in one hit. Cloyster has very low special defense, so it goes down with one Thunderbolt. And Arcanine cuts my attack with Intimidate, so it takes two Earthquakes to take him out. The fourth battle is against Jeanette Fisher from Crimson City the only one with the last name. It is on the grass field. Her three Pokemon are Beedrill, Scyther, and Bellsprout. They all go down with a single wing attack, making this one of the easiest matches yet. Right after the match, we run into a new friend named Richie. He just won his fourth battle too. Here's some foreshadowing. The next battle is the last match of the prelims. It is against Richie and will be in the Indigo Stadium a neutral environment. Right before our match, we get a phone call from Richie, who tells us he has something important for us to know. He wants us to meet him at the Pokemon League gate. Arriving at the Pokemon League gate, we encounter Team Rocket, who pretended to be Richie in order to separate us. They go down as easily as they normally do, and we take minimal damage. Going by foot would take too long, so instead, we fly to the Indigo Stadium with Dave. Starting the match with Richie, my Dragonite is too tired to battle, and my Venusaur lost more than half its health. Then my third Pokemon is just a pickup slave. Effectively, I'm down to half a Pokemon now. Our goal here will be to put Butterfree to sleep, and then use Leech Seed to gain some health. Unfortunately, Butterfree knows Psybeam, which deals significant damage to us. Great! Richie's second Pokemon is a Charmander, and it kills us in one hit with Flamethrower. We lose the match against Richie, but this actually follows the anime. If you beat Richie, you can actually continue to battle the Elite Four. But this does not actually achieve anything other than battling them, so do not fret if you lose. After the tournament, we warp back to our hometown, where a party is being held in our honor. Although Team Rocket crashed our party trying to tr steal our Pikachu, we don't even have the Pikachu on us. They could have just gone into Oak's backyard without interrupting us. Either way, they go down pretty easily. At the end of the party, Oak asks us to go to Valencia Island in the Orange Archipelago. He wants us to meet with Professor Ivory and bring back the mysterious Pokeball she has. We enter a raffle for a free blimp ride to Valencia Island. And would you believe it? We won the raffle! We board the blimp heading for Valencia Island. It turns out Misty and Brock won the raffle too. Nice, we'll go with friends. The raffle was rigged. Team Rocket tries to take our Pikachu and loses in another Pokemon battle. Jesus Christ! How did we survive that bullshit landing? We found Professor Ivy on Valencia Island. She says the Pokeball is at her lab, so we follow her there. After getting the golden Pokeball, we move south, where Ash decides to take the return flight on the same damn blimp that crashed. God damn, Ash is an idiot. I mean, I can only help him so much. Oh, what do you know? Team Rocket is still on the blimp they own? This time, a Jigglypuff shows up and causes us to go to sleep, which leads to the ship crashing. Again. It seems that we landed in a park on Tangelo Island. On this island, we can actually get a Lapras, but we need to fulfill a couple of conditions first. First, stop the trainers that are bullying the Lapras, then take the Lapras to the Pokemon Center. Once we do that, we must next talk to Tracy in the Pokemon Center. Upon seeing the Lapras in the pond behind the Pokemon Center, Team Rocket will show up trying to steal it. We easily beat them as always though. Now we get a Lapras in our party. We swim northwest towards Micklin Island, where one of the gym leaders of the Orange Islands is. We swim northeast along Route 3 before getting the gym badge, since we can catch more Pokemon before the gym badge. We arrive at Mandarin Island and immediately regret it, as the Pokemon on this island do not listen to their trainers. If there is a problem in the Pokemon universe, you can be almost certain that the police officer gonna neglect it 
and expect me to complete it for them. Officer Jenny wants my help. On the eastern house of Mandarin Island, we get the climb kit from a very nice individual. This will allow us to climb and to send specific edges. Entering the ornate building in the center of town, I immediately get assaulted from a Team Rocket member. I see Officer Jenny tried really hard to solve this case. After battling some grunts, we find Jesse and James. Apparently, they lost their Meowth and all their Pokemon were stolen too. Now that is some good old fashioned irony. Anyway, they help us out by giving us the lift key for the elevator. We don't need to battle them this time. We finally found them. They were using some machinery to amplify the powers of a drowsy to hypnotize everyone on the island. Eventually, Officer Jenny comes in to let us know that I have to beat Team Rocket for her to arrest them. We climb down the southeastern cliff and swim south along Route 4. Here we find a bottle with a note inside, alerting us that someone found a crystal onyx on Sunburst Island. Here we also catch a slowpoke. After swimming south, we arrive on the northern shore of Sunburst Island. We found the note writer, Marissa. She says her brother needs help with the crystal onyx. When we approach the eastern shore, a pathway opens up for us. The pathway leads to Crystal Cave, where Marissa's brother is located. Continuing through the cave, we find a crystal onyx that is incredibly high leveled. Ooh, a whooper! Mine! After leaving the cave, we head south and swim along Route 5. Heading towards Pinkin Island, we notice whirlpools. We use the whirlpools to our advantage to reach the southern shore of the island. On this island, we find a bunch of domesticated Pokemon and a very angry Rhyhorn that will try to chase us off the cliff. But now the Rhyhorn will not let us leave the island the way we came. But we can leave the island from the southeastern shore to swim through Route 6. We reach the next island and hear a doomsday prediction about the island sinking if a fossil is taken. Whatever. We enter the cave anyway. And we take a dome fossil anyway. We don't even need it. Uh, the island sunk into the ocean. Well shit, we can't save every island we find. Swimming north, we find a small island with a boat. To travel on the boat, we need the show pass which this man sells. Using the show pass, we can stay on the boat till we reach the destination, and battle some trainers while we are waiting. After some battling, Slowpoke evolves into Slowbro. After a lot of battling, we finally arrive at Kinno Island. On Kinno Island, we battle Misty. Misty has three Pokemon, and they all go down in one hit from my Venusaur's Razor Leaf. We travel north of the small island along Route 18. Eventually, we reach an island with a giant Magikarp flying around. Nurse Joy comes by to help it, and in a display of ridiculous raw strength, throws the Magikarp effortlessly, I might add, into the water. Swimming east, we arrive at Naval Island. On Naval Island is another gym battle, but we still need to get more Pokédex entries before we battle him. On the south part of the island, you can swim to the next section of the game, towards the Grepperberry Islands. Upon entering one of the Grepperberry Islands, we get accused of stealing Grepperberries. And to prove our innocence, apparently we need to go find the Grepperberry thief. Turns out, a Snorlax has been eating the Grepperberries. She needs to find a new place for food because Snorlax will eat every single berry. After tailing the Snorlax to each of the six islands, we finally corner him at Island 6, where a Jigglypuff will come out of nowhere and put it to sleep. This is our chance to catch the Snorlax. We catch the Snorlax, even though we already have one. We travel south along Route 21 until we reach Morrow Island. We head east of Morrow Island towards a sunken ship that Professor Oak told us has an Orange League trophy on board. Upon reaching the trophy, we're stopped by a Haunter and a Ghastly. Then Team Rocket appears wanting to steal the trophy for themselves. Upon defeating Team Rocket, Haunter possesses Meowth to speak with us. He says the trophy belonged to their master and they are proud to guard it in his stead. Now, traveling west of Morrow Island, we are stopped by Team Rocket again and are forced to battle them. We win easily like always. Post Team Rocket battle, Wooper evolved into Quagsire. We arrive at Golden Island and are quickly chased off the southern shore so they can continue worshipping Meowth. Traveling south along Route 23, we arrive at Murkot Island. Deep in the Murkot forest, we find a weakened Scyther and plan on catching it so it gathers dust in our PC. But Tracy has other plans and steals it away from us. We travel south of Murica Island along Route 24. We land on an island a little ways down and stumble upon Team Rocket again. They were on this island to get away from everything, but once we showed up, we reignited their addiction of stealing Pokemon. Either way, they lose pretty quickly. On this island, we catch a Farfetch. Traveling west through the islands, we eventually end up at Mandarin Island. After battling a purple-haired man in front of Lorelei, she invites us to a demonstration on the island stadium. After watching Lorelei's demonstration, she invites us back to her house and says it would be nice to have some company. As we enter Lorelei's house, we eye the bed when she asks, 
if we could battle with just one Pokemon each. Man, everything in this world becomes a Pokemon battle. Our Dragonite takes out Cloyster in one hit with Thunderbolt. Heading north into the mountains, we meet a hiker with a lot of Magnemites. He uses the Magnemites to take the lightning to neighboring areas that need the energy. In the process, Team Rocket shows up trying to steal the Magnemites. So we battle them and we win again. Going southwest, we climb down the mountain and are about to enter a new city when we fall through the ground into a sewer. This city needs better infrastructure. Upon informing the local police about falling through the ground and a strange cry I heard in the sewers, she tells us that there is an open pipeline on the north side of town and to tell her if we find anything. Absolutely useless, telling us to go solve it ourselves? We find a wild Bulbasaur in the sewers and it turns out the mayor abandoned it there when he was a child. I don't even want to think about how that Bulbasaur survived for this long. Officer Jenny will use this as political extortion to make sure the mayor does not get re-elected this year. Next, we take the ferry to Trovita Island, where the next gym leader is. Normally, we would keep progressing without getting any gym badges, but we can't progress any further because of these whirlpools. After we beat the gym leader, Misty will give us an item that will allow us to progress further. This battle is absolutely awful. We have to fight with an electric, grass, and water type respectively, completely eliminating the rock, paper, scissors format of Pokemon. We also need to have at least three high leveled Pokemon with these three types. Also, for some reason, some water types are not allowed to battle in this water battle. For example, my Slowbro was not allowed to partake in the battle. In the first battle, we use our level 12 Raichu because why the hell not? Well, this battle goes as well as you would think. Zero won him. The next battle is Grass, so our Venusaur will be perfect for this. One Sludge Bomb is all it takes and we win. Now it's tied one to one. Time for the last battle. The last battle is the water battle and takes countless tries. His Stormy knows Thunderbolt and Double Team. This is a massive pain because it guarantees that Stormy will have a super effective move against us. Eventually we find a good run with our Dugon and we are able to beat him. After the battle, Misty gives us the Whirlpooler so we can progress further north through the Whirlpools. Using the Whirlpooler, we traverse the Whirlpools in the ocean. Now we can progress further towards Fairchild Island. Before entering the forest, Team Rocket gets in my way, sucks up more of my time, and then theatrically blasts off. Upon exiting the forest, we swim north towards Route 7. On Cleopatra Island, we meet another gym challenger like myself. We battle each other to test the other's strength. It's a one-on-one -on -one Pokemon battle. My Venusaur is able to take out his Poliwrath in one hit with Razor Leaf. A little northwest, we are offered a boat ride to the next island, Buttwall Island. We graciously accept the offer. Unfortunately, the storm pushed us off course, so instead of Buttwall Island, we docked at Shamounty Island. When we get to the island, we are greeted by villagers wearing masks, calling me the chosen one for appearing during their festival. We need to head to the festival banquet and watch Melody dance a bit. Next, we need to take on a quest where the death rate is not 0%. We need to go to three different islands and collect three magical colored balls. Marin helps us get to Fire Island using her boat. We arrive at Fire Island and enter the cave to surpass the ordeal. While in the cave, we can catch a few Pokemon. Vulpix. Vulpix to Ninetales. Ponyta. After completing all the puzzles in the cave, we arrive at the shrine containing the Fire Sphere. What the hell? Then a flying contraption came out of nowhere stealing the Zapdos and Moltres. Then used a tracking beam to get us into the ship. Oh shit! This dude has a base set Hollow Mew Pokemon card? Is it weird that I'd rather have that than an actual Mew? Well, when the Pokemon Collector leaves, we free Moltres, whom then in turn frees Zapdos. The two of them then destroy the ship trying to flee. We landed on Lightning Island and complete the puzzles in the cave, making our way to the Lightning Sphere. When we get out of the cave, we find the legendary Pokemon are about to fight. We hightail it out of there on Marin's boat. We wake up on a snowy island and to a talking Slow King. I've still had weirder dreams. We take the Honorable Slow King's advice and place the spheres in the designated holes on the altar. Then the goddamn Slow King teleports behind us. We travel south through the snow until we arrive at, what do you know, another cave. God damn, I'm bad at these. Eventually, we arrive at the shrine and grab the Ice Sphere. Upon arriving back from Ice Island, we are greeted by Misty, whom picks this moment to confess her feelings about us. When we place the Ice Sphere in the designated hole, the snow on the island disappears and Lugia arrives telling us we did a good job. We arrive back at Shamounty Island after this great ordeal. Ponyta then evolves into Rapidash. That is as far as the game goes. There is nothing else to do and no more Pokemon we can catch. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, I never really mentioned it, but thanks guys, we hit 100 subs, and we already flew past 150. It's kind of crazy to think about it for me, but 
I guess I'll keep doing whatever it is I'm doing. Okay, thanks, bye. Hello.